Thank you very much indeed, and I am really very happy to be able to take part in this session. And we can discuss very important issues and even to philosophize, to be very philosophic about all those items. My presentation on the way to malignant therapy. Uh, the first thing to do is to define the precision therapy. This is a solution, a decision that we make in regard to our own health. Uh, we've got to determine what lifestyle we are going to pursue. This is the hierarchy of things. And we were thinking a lot about what kind of question could be asked about precision therapy. Now this term has become part of our oncologist's vocabulary. But generally speaking, then precision medicine is using precision medicine traditional medicine with us it is a radiotherapy surgery Drug. Target therapy allows us to approach treatment with more confidence. And the story of the development of medicines brought about a lot of changes. In 1950s, we had just regular chemotherapy. Today, we are already discussing adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, then, uh, we started to identify the internal structure of the tumor and we were described whatever depends on that uh, deciphering the genome, then development of targeted therapy, and today we discussed a lot immune therapy. So we put in lots of our hopes in Kyoto, in EGTS. So, and first we'll speak how to treat diseases with antibiotics. Every scientist hopes that invention of the Tardizubam 
Uh, and in the cloud you see a lot of research going on in the field of monoclonal antibodies for the squibus war cancer. If we try to treat it with nivolumab, then about 50% of the budget will go for that practically all new diagnostic means of diagnostic permit us to select a patient with a genome of his tumor and this genetic profiling of tumors can make the uh, treatment very effective. And now, we can speak uh, we follow quite a number uh, of diseases. What do you think? Can is artificial intelligence be used in your practice? You see now, not everyone can know about that. Might be only some clinical cases. Some say that you don't need to use artificial intelligence. And some say, yes, it should be used in treatment. I would like now to tell you briefly what's going on in Kazakhstan. We are now running a comprehensive program to combat cancer. And the main organs of the body uh, singled out for that program are the lung cancer, the stomach cancer, and melanoma. This relations uh, which we have uh, allow us to bring your people to Kazakhstan. And uh, speaking about mutations that call for development of precision therapy, uh, and where a lot depends on the availability of the drugs for that. Before, we used to have only 14 patients for which um, medical treatment was recommended. And now, we also 
uh, we have uh, we have a program uh, that uh, brought the potential of artificial intelligence to our doctors and uh, we were going through all old time stories and we were checked uh, what is going on now uh, and we paired with Intellect Watson company but uh, in spite of that being very expensive, we started applying these methods in our practice. Today we have a master group of 25 patients and we have made some sequencing on them and we found that 30% uh, 30 of the women demonstrated those symptoms BRK1, BRK2 uh, which signal the possibility of uh, breast cancer in these women. So now we are trying to wait for the government to have their say. Maybe we could uh, find a specific gene in our women of the Altai group. And the same went even forward. We've chosen uh, patients with colorectal cancer. Again, sequencing was performed and we found pathogenic mutations in many patients. And some of them, uh, uh, some of these mutations, namely eight ones, were classified as new ones because nobody reported that earlier than we did. Now, uh, in cooperation with the Cancer Institute of Milan, uh, oh, uh, we don't know, but we have a joint research with our Korean colleagues and we are working on the tests for natural killers of the tumors. Uh, if the level of your immune system in regard to these immune killers is lower than 500, say, this means that we can have treatment like that with uh, this skin here on the calves. And we found that the more uh, widespread uh, our uh, the cancer became when the patient had at the same time uh, certain other pathologies, especially uh, uh, also we have a program for studying of selectinib and italizumab and the third stage of tests of desalizumab for the patients with cancer of mammary glands. We run all this research on a regular basis and I have at least three viewpoints 
uh, on that precision medicine because I have to convince our Ministry of Health Care uh, that uh, with precision medicine we'll have more patients healthy and uh, with five years survival rate of about 80. The second uh, task uh, which we have is paperwork and because we have to support all our applications for drugs and for analysis uh, at a level so that there could be uh, uh, so uh, better outcomes. However, uh, the survival rates according to these programs is only 20 to 30 percent. And this is why the ministry uh, is not happy because they say that two or three months is not a figure for a person to take care of. Thank you very much for your brilliant presentation. We can take questions. Okay, public health people you know uh, they do understand that patients would like to live longer it's a fantastic point of view we appreciate uh, uh, you know what <laughs> our uh, public health persons finally started understanding the grassroots people, ordinary people. And basically, it's an international event, and we just discussed the uh, basic uh, diagnostic set for BCR1, or maybe we have to do something else. No, we don't have to waste money on special uh, tests because the mutation set is the same. We already, you know, invested in this endeavor. I have a question: How many patients a year do we have? You know, we, you got 100 million dollars, so but 35 thousand uh, get sick, 80% of those need treatment. Okay, let's calculate per capita. It doesn't matter how to calculate. How many patients of yours are the third and fourth stages, advanced stages of the disease? 25 percent at the fourth stage terminal stage. Sometimes it's difficult to differentiate like um, second and the third stage. What about dynamics? No, we report the zero and one stage. So we've been doing screening for 10 years and we need to understand whether uh, um, this endeavor was efficient. Now we have already 26% of uh, initial stages. Uh, the same amount at the fourth stage. Well, as for like a second B and the third A, it's difficult to tell. But 75% of our patients uh, are at the advanced stages, be it second, uh, stage two, three, or four. Mm. And as for the rectal cancer, basically only 16% of our patients uh, were diagnosed at early stages. And that's our task is to increase proportion of patients with, at stage one, stage two. Mm. 
In order to improve statistics, uh, no, we can manipulate with numbers like stage three. Instead of stage three, we can diagnose stage two. Sixty-six percent in our country of stage one, stage two, and with a very low uh, one year and five year survival. With consideration of all the specific data, we divided to three diseases: in breast cancer, cervical cancer, and colorectal cancer. And here we can calculate all, you know, these indicators. Not to the mic, doesn't matter. We understand it. What is reinforced up to date? So Watson is analyzed by artificial intelligence. Uh, what percentage of hospitals in Kazakhstan use up to date? Probably all. All. Hospitals. That's why I'm not surprised you conquered artificial artificial intelligence. In our country, one, maybe two percent use it. Okay. All the regions are represented here. So basically, you know, artificial intelligence may be applied to diagnosis of um, malignancies. <laughs> 